quick revision video looking at the different types of graphs you get in the rates of reaction topic. So I'm going to be looking at concentration time graphs and rate concentration graphs. So we'll start with this concentration time graph and the very very first thing to say is that rate is equal to the change in concentration divided by the change in time. So in other words it's the gradient of the line. So you can see this is a straight line, so it has a constant gradient and therefore the rate is not affected by the concentration. So you can see the concentration is changing but that gradient is constant. So therefore this must be a zero order reaction. The concentration is having no effect on the rate. So moving on to this concentration time graph, we'll start by looking at how you would measure the rate of the reaction and then we'll move on to what it's saying about order. So in terms of rate, we might be asked to calculate the initial rate. So all you do is construct a tangent to the curve at t equal to zero, time equal to zero. So that red line there represents that and then obviously you just work out the change in y and divide that by the change in x. So as well as the initial rate, you might be asked to calculate the rate at a different point. So I'm going to go for the rate at 80 seconds. So you construct a tangent to the curve that only touches at 80 seconds. And again, you just measure the change in y and divide that by the change in x. And you can see clearly that the gradients are different. So the rate is changing with the concentration. So this obviously can't be zero order. So it's the same graph, but I've just enlarged it a little bit. So how can you work out the order from this concentration time graph? Well, you measure the half-life. So if we look at the concentration at the very start of the reaction, that's at 5.8 moles per decimeter cubed. So the half-life is the time it takes to for the concentration to decrease by half. So that goes down, that's going to go down to 2.9. So you follow along to the graph and then drop down to the x-axis. So that time period there is about 54 seconds. You then measure another half-life, so that's going to be the time it takes to go from 2.9 down to half of that, which is 1.45. So again, you work out the time period that that takes, and we're getting 56 seconds now. So they're not identical, but they're very, very close together. So the half-life is roughly constant, so we can say that it's first order with respect to the reactant. So moving on to rate concentration graphs now. So we've got a straight line graph starting at the origin. So the rate is proportional to the concentration. So this must be first order. This rate concentration graph, you can see that the rate is not changing as the concentration of I2 in this case is changing. So that's zero order. And finally, the rate of this reaction is proportional to the square of the concentration. And so therefore, this is second order.